please visit sleepapia.org to get more videos like this one, as well as audio and blog content. Join us at sleepapnea.org to be included in the conversation and updated whenever new programs are available. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy! Good afternoon, uh, Internet Worlds. I am pleased to welcome back the one and only open heart and sleep apnea patient, Mark Ostrich, who has helped us navigate and tell the story of sleepapnea.org for the past year, uh, if not longer. And uh, in the midst of that journey, Mark has, uh, unbeknownst to him, found his own sleep apnea journey to, to go and uh, uncover. So we're going to mm -hmm. unpack that, deconstruct it, and uh, see what how Mark's doing in his initial uh, sleep apnea journey. Let's get after it. All right. So how you feeling, Mark? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Last night, you know, uh, my sleep was, I got about four and a half hours on my CPAP. Um, you know, that's about a little less than average. I'm kind of about six hours a night. And uh, why, why do you think you took it? Why do you think you're only wearing it four and a half hours at this point? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure because it, it fluctuates the amount of sleep that I'm getting machine nightly. And I've actually... I brought some stuff here to show like the types of masks in the very amount of short time I've been on sleep at the CPAP. But, uh, you know, my journey is really connected to the heart issues that I've had um, right. that really kind of drove me to really look at CPAP as, as you know, as a therapy that could help with the um, arrhythmia that I was having um, from open heart surgery that I had 20 plus years ago. Uh, so, yeah. so I guess that would be my first question, Mark. Are, are, do you feel like your arrhythmias are under control now that you've been on some CPAP or do you have better control of it or? I've been pretty asymptomatic throughout the whole, the whole course of, uh, going through my, you know, my yearly tests. Basically right. I, I, I had my last open heart surgery. I have, I have something called tetralogy of fallot with pulmonary atresia. And, uh, this is a congenital heart defect that when I was one month old, I, you know, I started exhibiting symptoms of, of blueness in my lips and fingernails. My parents had no idea what was going on. I actually was had apnea then at one month old because um, I, I was having a hard time breathing. They brought me into the, the doctors. They took me diagnosed me. And after that diagnosis, I, I basically had to wait um, until I was four years old for the first open heart surgery. Um, where they replaced my pulmonary valve. Um, yeah, I, I remember. I remember us talking about that. I remember us talking about that with Dr. Thomas, your your whole journey. Um, and I think you know the reason and I sort of was pushing you is that you know, once you told me that you had this history of sleep apnea, even going back in your records from day one, I was like, you know, it, it was baffling to me that the heart world, uh, all these experts, these top renowned people in all these fields and all over this course of your journey into your now into your <clears throat> mid forties, um, which is yeah. amazing in itself and a testament to their science and expertise and, and, and that they've gotten you here, but that, that there was still room for improvement in your quality of life and at the outcomes. And so, you, yeah. you know, the, the way we got here is you were facing, oh, maybe I have to have a pacemaker or maybe I have to have a much more another serious intervention or open heart. And I was like, Mark, have you tried this yet? You know, no, I, and it's been something I've been thinking about actually since we started talking about, you know, CPAP therapy and, you know, yeah. basically being an undiagnosed sleep apnea patient. And it wasn't until my, you know. Basically, when I was 16, I had my second open heart surgery. And then at the age of 27, when I was already living in Los Angeles, you know, as an adult male, I had my third open heart surgery. And and after open heart surgery, I go in once a year for a checkup. And every year, it's been the same, same basically, uh, result of the checkup. The, the result was, you look great. Everything's amazing. Everything's amazing. Wow, what a great, you know, what a great piece of surgery Dr. Lax did. You're, you're fine. You're great. The last one that was on July seventh, my last okay, visit, good. which is which is funny because my first open heart surgery was on July seventh, nineteen seventy seven, which is the seven, triple, seven, the, tri seven. The, tri the triple seven, the quadruple seven, yeah, seven seven seventy seven. <laughs> um, 
basically um, my echo was showing some arrhythmia. And so they said, why don't we do one of these cam tests where you wear like a cam monitor um, on your, on your chest for about two days, a 48 hour cam test that would monitor basically a constant EKG for two days. Um, once I sent that in, I wore it for two days, about a month later when they finally got the results, I get a call and they said, you had something called a VTAC episode. Did you feel any symptoms? Cause we see your arrhythmia is still there, but then you had this, um, uh, this episode of tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia. And that was very concerning to them. And all of a sudden, everything kind of ramped up really fast to, I want you to have see uh, an electrophysiologist. And we started talking about uh, potential, you know, uh, defibrillators and everything just started getting ramped up. Uh, you're, you're, you're a three-time open heart patient. And, right. uh, you, you know, you automati automatically in the middle of the COVID era, uh, on top of it, this is July of 19 during COVID, you're having these issues. So I'm sure your stress levels were at all times highs, like everyone else's. Exactly. So you they know? said, "Was is anything going on? And I said, well, number one, I did buy a new coffee. You know, we got a new coffee maker. My wife and I were drinking. I'm, I was drinking like four or five cups of coffee a day. I'm home all day working from home. Uh, I probably wasn't drinking enough water. Not, you know, everything come, was out of whack. Um so immediately they put me on a metropoprol. I don't even know. It's a beta blocker, a small dose beta blocker. Um, I, I quit coffee cold turkey as soon as they said the, the episode about tachycardia. And that's when I really said, I, I want to look at my sleep component here because I knew from our conversations and from what I've been studying and what I've been reading that, you know, CPAP machine can actually help reduce arrhythmia because it gets your heart back into a normal rhythm because you're getting more oxygen through your body. Um, and, and this is not something that they would have recommended. And this is no fault of the, the great team at UCLA that's been looking after me for 20 plus years. It's just that they're in their silos and these different silos, you know, with their blinders on aren't trained to, you know, it's kind of like symptom. Let, let's just treat the problem with, you know, they wouldn't even consider an ablation as a, you know, it was just like, get, get, get the guy a, a defibrillator. And I was like, whoa, whoa. You know, I like to go diving. I'm in my mid forties. There's still a lot of stuff I want to do. I really want to use that as the last ditch, ditch effort. So they did. They did say, you know, maybe we should look at the CPAP. Uh, you know, see, get you a sleep study. So I was able to get a sleep study at UCLA. Um, how long ago was that? Now the sleep study was in August or September, um, and it showed severe sleep apnea. You know, uh, it was. You know, I was sleeping on my back there. Um, and how long between you having your study did you did you then start to try the intervention? Because I know at your study you had a split study, so they gave you a little bit of it that first night. And I remember yeah. you had a positive experience, right? Yes. Uh, they put the CPAP machine on me there because I was breath holding, and yeah. um, they obviously didn't want any really negative outcomes to ha happen in their care and their which, which is an important point because on, yeah. on their property from a, an insurance and liability they they have to treat you i mean you're yeah. you're at risk and they treated you right then and there but when you woke up in the morning you walked out of there without your intervention yeah and um i'm seeing a uh, a, a question come up from uh, toby mm -hmm. Walwork is that did you ever suspect that you weren't getting enough sleep or the good good sleep uh Answer that question. Yes, I would say over the last uh, several years, um, even starting really in my thirties, I noticed my sleep was more disturbed. You know, my sleep cycles were not as consistent as they were when I was younger and in my twenties. Has has your range for what good quality sleep is now that you've had a little taste of CPAP? Not you're not fully successful, fully, you know, where it's like a no brainer for you. But has, has it? Have you felt? Have you gotten to see the benefits of it? Right? Yeah, and, and when I know that I've gotten about six hours plus of good sleep with the CPAP with mm -hmm. with the mask not leaking, mm -hmm. I can noticeably feel a difference and uh from day one once i got the machine and it took a while to get the machine and to get go through all the rigmarole and i can only imagine uh people that have, you know i guess i was diagnosed with severe sleep apnea I, I sleep on my used to sleep on my stomach 
right. and which would kind of minimize the amount of snoring and hypoxia. Um, yeah, Dr. Gimeno used to say that, you know, children sleep, you'll know, find them in child's pose because they'll naturally protect themselves. They let yeah. your tongue fall forward. It forces air into your diaphragm. So, you know, but eventually your body can only do that for so long. Exactly. So, you know, it, the, uh, what's, what's interesting is last week, just, just last week, I did the second cam monitor not because I wanted to get used to CPAP for about a month or so. Once, once I finally got it right. to do the test again. So, you know, I was never aware that I had this VTAC episode, this, right. you know, these fast beats, these 16 really fast beats that were happening when I did my 48 hour cam monitor test where, where I wore the, the constant EKG. Um, and when, were those were those episodes during the day or during the night? Were you, it was were they, during the day, like a three ish, and they were like, "Did you remember? Did you fall down? Did you pass?" And I was like, "No, I was just doing my thing." You know, it could have even been exercise. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I wasn't symptomatic. And just like when I wore it for five days, I wore it from Monday through Friday last week, um, the cam monitor, and sent it back. So now, in about three weeks or so, we should get the results of that to see if there has been any. Uh, change in the arrhythmia and, and hopefully there has been I feel great I, I actually have been exercising more regularly um, I feel a clarity I don't get that middle of the afternoon lull that I was getting nice. um, uh, how about your mood how, how do you how do you feel feel fine okay? <laughs> feel fine I don't want why do keep people ask that why are, everyone's asking me that no I'm um, my, my, my mood's been actually better um you know, um, you know, oh, you know, it's been a stressful year uh, for everybody. Yeah, I, mean, everybody. I, I, just, I literally just got this on my phone. I don't even know if, if, uh, you know, people can see this emergency alert state of California, new public. I mean, this is 11 minutes ago. This is actually happening right now. You know, wow. COVID-19 is spreading, you know, you know, stuff like that on your phone. That's not very relaxing. Yeah, I get Amber Alerts now. Yeah, um. it's, it, it's not something that you're just like, oh, okay, just keep right on going. It's, you know, there's all these things in this new normal of this this COVID era that we're living in. Hopefully that light at the end of the tunnel is there. Well, but, it, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting segue, Mark, and, yeah. and it's important for people to hear it from us, especially in our community, that, you know, with the vaccine news out there now from the FDA, uh, you know the the pandemic, and we're we're on this this uphill giant you know roller coaster. You know, getting ready to get to the top, and we haven't even gotten near the top yet, which is scary. Mm -hmm. That you know, being a sleep apnea patient uh, puts us at higher risk. You're an open heart and sleep apnea patient, yet we have we already have compromised immune systems from years of of, of hypoxia and, and interruptions as it is. That you know, when that vaccine is available for you, because you are a sleep apnea patient, that's that's going to put you up the priority line, and and it's no joke. And you know, wear, wear, wearing your mask and, and maintaining yeah. the physical distance, especially over this winter period. Uh, I mean, we we're seeing great long-term research coming out of South America that you know they were disciplined enough to wear their mask. Uh, they've kept the flu to a minimal, uh, and you know this country we've we've lost our discipline and our ability to sacrifice this is you know the greatest generation had to make a sacrifice for yeah well, i'm staying at home as much as i can i mean i am doing some things outside of the house and uh you know i see some questions coming in here you know about what was it like growing up with heart problems was i able to live a quote unquote normal life uh elizabeth johnson asked that so uh no i, I always i always grew up feeling normal except you know i have a scar on my chest and one around here from when I was four and, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's helped help my life in a lot of ways, having the surgery. Number one, I'm alive. Number two, it's helped shape my character in the sense of overcoming obstacles and, you know, always trying to look on the, on the bright side and knowing that everyone has some kind of cross to bear. I know my Jewish mother may not like that expression, but, uh, you know, everyone, everyone's got some kind of spilkis in dealing with, you know, so, well, um, speaking of spilkis, I mean, do you feel like the CPAP is giving you sinus problems? Is it, you know, I know you have a lot of obstruction up in your upper airway and your nose. And is that, is that? It's interesting. I think because there's been a big change of weather yesterday, sometimes when it changes, my sinuses get act up until they were acting up a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think anybody with kind of chronic sinusitis deals with that. Yeah. But one of the cool things about 
CPAP was uh, when I use the nasal pillow or, you know, the nasal covering. Yep. Um, you, I can actually feel the air rushing through my nasal passages. And opening them up. Yeah, opening them up, drying them out. Yeah. And in a way, I think it's really helped my, yeah. my nasal issues because it's like push, it's forcing that air through there that it wasn't getting before. And, you know, th this, this CPAP machine is – is not an exact science and and I'm, I'm looking at some questions here do I, do I monitor my arrhythmia when awake if I could feel the palpitations I guess I would monitor it more but because I'm asymptomatic I, it's, pr I, it's probably a good idea that you don't you don't need the, the added anxiety is what they would tell you yeah I don't really feel any palpitation once in a while I'll feel a palpitation maybe before I go to sleep once Every month, I, I walk around with my, my new watch, and I got to tell you, with the new pulse oximeter in there, and I've been testing mm -hmm. around and playing with it, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by, you know, what it can do and what it's, you know, giving us another component as far as now that we're in this decentralized mobile virtual world because of COVID and because of the pandemic, uh, that these are things that we, we, we will start to value more as patients and when we go to our doctors. Yeah. Um, it's our, it's our data. So, it, you know, it, 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 if it doesn't bother you, I, I would, I think, you know, wearing a watch. I like right. wearing my, uh, dive watch, you know, just, yeah, well, I'm, I like going in the water. Well, we're not yeah. underwater. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but then, you know, uh, in terms of the life I've led, I, I feel very blessed, you know, being able to do shark week episodes and go to the last undersea habitat and do all these kind of fun expeditions that, that take me to kind of extreme environments like, you know, deep, you know, not, I don't go really deep diving, but, you know, a hundred feet, 90 feet, you know, doing these dives really kind of makes you feel lucky to be alive. And, and obviously it's one of the reasons why I don't want to get a defibrillator because that, that would impact, you know, the activities I'm able to do. Right. Um, but, but, you know, getting into CPAP, like I, I actually have here some, yeah. some, some stuff here. Here's the actual, when this is the the mask that they put me on when um so you got a very a very small nasal very small nasal pillow this is usually what they start people out with uh and you said I, I know you mentioned earlier that you were having some leaking issues were you leaking through the nose or your mouth uh through the mouth and so this was the first one that i used when i was at um ucla with the chin strap to help keep my mouth closed so this did, was you like, did you like the chin strap or did it feel sort of claustrophobic or? it was fine i actually now i actually put a little piece of tape right here nice. to help. Taper. i'm a taper i'm a mouth taper yeah so then when they sent me the actual machine mm -hmm. which this is funny because i think they just pick whatever they have there when they send the dme supply company i think they just put whatever so then i got this which was a little more of like a nasal. It's a nasal, a nasal, a nasal cover that goes over your nose. Did you like the head strap up top? Some people I didn't, like it, right? I, Some so people don't. What I didn't like about it is because of my nose. It was actually putting too much pressure on my nose. I'd wake up and it would be like red and kind of it was getting swollen and it was just yeah. So it wasn't not, for you. So no. Goldilocks, what what did you find your mask? Is the so question. then I went to UCLA <laughs> and they gave me this one. Uh, okay, this is uh, uh, so uh, this was like the Darth Vader one. Did you like that? That's pretty. That's pretty advanced. I got to tell you because it doesn't even go over your nose, so it's covering your yeah. nose and your mouth. Yeah. So what was funny about this one is you know my wife, uh, you know, is my 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 bed partner. Um, when this is on. If I open my mouth and it's, this was a little, you know, I have a big mouth. No. <laughs> I have a big mouth. <laughs> it, would, it would make the funniest sound out of the side of the, when it would start to leak. It actually sounded like a balloon. Justine you know, used to say mine sounded like a bicycle tire. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah mine was like a balloon. Like, like, <laughs> so then I was like, oh, it's too small. And then I bought the larger one. Yeah. Look how nice and relaxed he looks on this package, though, right? Well, that's, oh, that's good marketing, man. Yeah, look at that. He's got uh, his tablet. And his are are you a paid spokesman for that company, Mark? Just I have to ask now that we have. Oh, yeah. No, I am not. And no, I didn't even like the mask. So, <laughs> okay, uh, just ask it. <laughs> so, actually, uh, I had the same issue with that mask. So, now I'm actually back to this, the simple. And this is actually giving me the best results.
So you're you're using a nasal mask. You're taping your lips. Yep. And you're averaging anywhere from right now about four and a half to six hours on a good night. On a good night, it's seven plus hours, like full night. Uh, when you uh, wake up, do you pop up? Do you do you are you getting up to go to the bathroom during yeah, the night? I had to put uh, a skylight above, so, so I wouldn't go through the roof. So they just we just open that up. I pop right out of bed through the roof. Is that the James Bond thing? Yeah, <laughs> I'm so energized. That I just fly out of bed. But when I do get up, it, it I actually work out pretty much right away. I get on the bike, on a stationary bike, and I work out. I do have that much kind of energy when I get up. So it is it is a is significant. That new, is that new for you? Working out right when I kind of get up, I have a glass of water. And, wow. and also, I don't miss the coffee. You know, I was never like a massive con coffee connoisseur, mm -hmm. but uh, – I feel like the CPAP um, has made me, uh, I guess we could just say this because we might as well talk, you know, more regular, you know, it's like everything's, everything in my system is like kind of yeah. moving. My whole is, GI thing is, is uh, your, is your, your, your lovely bed partner happy with, uh, with you now? She has been, you know, um, and welcome back, you know, there's technical difficulties in the COVID era, just like in any other era. So we're just moving right along. So, Yes. Uh, the question was, is my wife having benefits from me, you know, wearing CPAP? And the answer is just yes. It, you know, with, with my sleep less disturbed, her sleep is less disturbed. She has actually told me straight out like she's sleeping better right. throughout the night. So it really does affect the whole the whole family. It's it's amazing the the amount of things that you take for granted or what your baseline is before you start therapy compared to what it is after, and as you start to get through, I, I still you know I used to find there was plateaus, but I am still even after I did this last intervention a year ago, feeling better and better and and noticing things change. Um, so I mean the fact that you've already found out that you can wear a really minimally invasive small nasal mask and tape your lips and you and you're and you're seeing the benefits and and uh, have the 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 perseverance obviously as a three-time open heart patient to, to make it through this um you're gonna you're working the problem which is all you can do is put one foot yeah. in front of another and and make it work for you so that you avoid the major interventions totally and i may get another you know this mask is pretty minimal but it but it but it does work um, they do have ones that are like a hybrid between just the nasal pillow yeah. and this other one. I mean, there's so many different kinds of masks. I had no idea. I mean, I knew there were a variety and I, I've seen, seen some of them, but once you, once you become a, you know, a CPAP wearer, it's once you start using the therapy and you realize like, Oh my God, there's, there's literally hundreds of options now are, are you getting these masks through your insurance or are you going out of pocket over the counter onto an online store or something two two of them i got through insurance and then in mm. ucla and then two i i i paid for right no actually one one i paid for mm -hmm. um which was the larger version of the full face mask which i thought was going to be like the panacea that was going to be it but for, for whatever reason um I, I kind of actually just prefer the feeling of the the nasal pillow only in the minimal setup. I bet you, since you're so accustomed to the scuba diving and keeping your lips sealed around your, your, your regulator, that just having something over your nose and just having that little simple reminder of the tape, it's all you need. I mean, if, if as long as your airway is closed, the air is going through your nose and keep down your throat, keeping it open. That's, yeah. that's all you're doing, you know? What, what was happening was, you know, when you turn on your side a little bit, when I had the full face mask, it would push it. It would just kind of push it slightly off, and that's when you would get the the squeaky balloon noise. The the manufacturers are now starting to use the the 3D face technology, you know, that that Apple does for your phones, and you know they design they normally design masks for 80% of the population, but as we're seeing, you know, a lot of people with apnea have some anatomical issues. So it's it's like you know I made that joke to you earlier. It's like it's Goldilocks. Yeah. Is, it, is it too warm? Is it too too cold? Or is it just right? And you, you know you seem to be getting you're on that journey to get there. You know we have the our, our program that we started doing with Dr. Partha Sarathi at at Arizona, which is the Awake Peer Mentors, which is right when you get that diagnosis, uh, you can come in and work with one of our mentors, and someone will hold your hand and go through and go through and help you get 
acclimated to this machine because there, there's a lot of things to manage. And when you're cognitively it impaired is. and it sleep is. deprived, it's, it's not easy. I, I was so, you know, amazed that, you know, um, the level of care that I've received my entire life for my heart condition mm -hmm. was so like First proactive part. and, yeah. and, you know, coming up, you know, and then all of a sudden with, with the sleep apnea, it was kind of like, Oh, the, it's the patient. Everything's like everything patient is if the patient's not asking, we're not do, doing it. And I was really kind of like a little taken aback that the, um, that it's not so proactive in this field that it's, it's really up to the patient. It seems like, to find the right mask, to find, you know, to find the right settings. Like they just put the settings on and just like let it ride, you know. When you yeah, as, as the great Bobby Weir once said in, in Throwing Stones, we're on our own. And unfortunately for patients, the system, you know, it's let us down so many places. And I'm not here to bag on the system. I think I think COVID has, has exposed a lot of systematic failures in a lot of different places at this point. Uh, the good thing is, is there are solutions once you get to a place like sleepapnea.org or to anywhere else that, that someone could help you out. And you can you can find, you know, depending upon what part of your journey you're at, you can start to ask for help because, you know, we go 10, 15 years without ever getting a diagnosis, let alone getting the right intervention and getting someone to hold your hand yeah. all the way through it. It's, it's you know, it's become second nature to me. Like I wear my, you know, you, you wear glasses, you know, you, first thing you do in the mornings, you put them on and the last thing you do at night is take them off. It's the same, it's the same, but the reverse for CPAP. The last thing you do right. before you go to bed, you put your mask on and hopefully the last, the first thing you do in the morning is take it off. Right. And, and, and it's really, you know, it's really incumbent on the patient to try to push through some of those barriers, you know, yes. Like, do, do I want to wear a mask every night? Do I want to put that stuff on? No, but you know what? It, 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 it is improving the quality of life and, and it's actually, you know, full disclosure, you know, I, I've known you a long time. Um, if it wasn't for this organization, I, I may not, we may not even be having this conversation because I, I probably wouldn't have pushed so hard to like, Hey, let me get this sleep study done because it could be a, you know, it took the arrhythmia that was happening for, for me to push me over the top to get me to do it. And I'm really thankful that I did. I'm thankful to you for the knowledge that I was able to learn about sleep apnea. Otherwise, I, I mean, I've done it, may not have gotten the CPAP or the sleep study. And I'm somebody that was, work, you know, working and learning about this for over a year before I went and did it. You know, it was on my radar to do it, but, it, 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 you know, I, I, I want to urge people out there that, that maybe have been thinking about it, toying with the idea, you know, oh, they know they're snoring at night or they're not getting a good night's sleep, but it seems like a hassle. Get the sleep study. Just it's the, the, the knowledge of knowing, just knowing. Once you know, you could then take the right action. If, if you're just pushing it, putting it off and pushing it off, you're only hurting yourself and, and the people around you. So, you know, Mark, it's, it's, it's the knowledge and it's, there's a lot of disease of denial around sleep since it's a soft disease and it hasn't been, you know, it really takes usually a major episode like, like a, a, a cardiac episode or, a, you know, something else or a car crash or something major in your life before people do it. Uh, but that's the key point is, is not only did you go and get the test, but you persevered when, you know, they, you know, this is, I want to try the intervention. I, this might be an easier, less non-invasive way for me to manage my life going forward than having to go back under the knife and under anesthesia, uh, which can't be good for any of us over over a prolonged period of time. No, I, well, I don't want to have a device in, in me if I don't have to have it. And, you know, I, I would almost think like every professional athlete, every almost, you know, most There's people, I, I think most middle-aged humans, man or woman have some kind of sleep disorder by the time they're in their mid forties. I would say there's a high percentage of people that can benefit from, from uh, CPAP machines. And, and I, I, you know, for me as just a regular citizen out there, I, I would think that this therapy should be available to, to everybody. And, and it's still somewhat confounding that it's so hard to try to get this machine into the hands of so many people that would benefit because you know, their nighttime function is nowhere close to their daytime function. And so if you could get that yin and yang of daytime and nighttime function, you know, working well together, I think people's quality of life will improve. Uh, you know, I want to I want to thank you because you've been you've not only I'm, I'm so happy that we can say that we helped you 
discover this on your journey, but you've helped us discover who we were and all the different important aspects that we've been doing because we're, we're not one to toot our own horn around here. We're the small little engine that could as, as a patient advocacy association. And we've stuck our neck out and, you know, been innovating and pioneering like with the, the mobile sleep health study we did, you know, f four years before COVID, before the whole world went virtual. Uh, this peer mentor program that we've been, you know, we were a stakeholder and, and a, an advisor for Dr. Partha Sarathi in Arizona. Uh, we have, we finished an overlap demonstration project where we had to connect all the, all the data from all the different devices from around the country. And, you know, as a result of COVID and as, like I said, this, the systematic failure, you know, now the heart world, now the, the autoimmune, the inflammatory world, the respiratory world, the allergy world, the mental health world, they're all seeing there is a major sleep component to whether you have COVID or not, you know, go back to electricity. We, because of the advent of technology and, and us being on these screens all day, especially locked at home in confinement right now, it's screwing us up. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, as much as you can get outside, be safe wearing a mask, get some exercise, move around, you know, get, get that vitamin D, you know, from, from the sun, if, 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 if you can, and you're able to, yeah. um, I think, those things really do help your mental state, which will ultimately help your nighttime function when, when you're sleeping. My biggest anxiety, and it happened about three times here this morning, is we lost power. It got cold here. So who knows what happened in Florida? Maybe a palm tree f fell down or something or, 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 <laughs> or a, a froze. But if I lose power, I can't use my machine. So my biggest anxiety is making sure I have a backup battery for my machine just in case, or I have a generator uh, just in case, because I know that I can't function and help others around me if my sleep is interrupted, period. Yeah. And, and uh, where we live, I'm in California, you know, with the stress of COVID and all these other things, we're dealing with fires. Yeah. Um, and, they've been off, and they've been shutting off power out. And there. they've been shutting off power. So we're actually looking into uh, battery backup systems now so we could have constant power, not just obviously for CPAP and things like that, but just, just for safety measures for the, for, you know, for, for the whole home. Um, As the great Robert Zimmerman said, the times are changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just did pretty well for himself. Uh, yeah. He's done well he, over over a life. He's done, he's had a good life. He just made three hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's did a you wonder. Hear that yesterday, he huh? sold his whole catalog. Yeah, I saw it. It's a yeah. wonder. Yeah, um, <laughs> but um, it, these issues that we're talking about the backup battery, I. I I feel immense empathy for those that aren't in a position to be able to do these things and, and get backup power. In general, you know, it, if it was hard for me to get on a CPAP machine, I could only figure out with people that are kind of, um, you know, struggling to make ends meet and they're trying to figure out their their sleep issues. It, it pains me every day, Mark, when I keep when I'm watching the news and I know I'm at home and thank God I can be at home and, and we can run this organization virtually from home. But I know there's people that have to get out and, and you know put food on the table and, and need they they're front line. They they gotta be out. And for people not to respect their dignity and their quality of life, uh you know, with what's going on and, and you you talked about it, the barriers to getting this machine, the fact that the the barrier to entry um it's a it's a really a rich white man's disease because you got to go through the system and, and you got to be able to pay for it and you got to pay for the supplies and the ongoing um these are the things that need to, to be reversed immediately i mean this it, it's it is an ethical dilemma uh i don't know how the ethics behind these companies uh you know i mean i know they're motivated by profit you know it's a, we live in a capitalistic society but you know, there's an ethical component here that people who are suffering deserve to be able to get these machines. They should be able to get these machines. It will improve their lives. It will end up, I think, saving tons of money in the healthcare system long term if people are able to get a good night's sleep. It 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 it, it impacts daytime function a lot. We, 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 with the work that we've done over the last eight or so years with the advent of the Affordable Care Act and the work that PCORI Patient Centered Outcome Research did and that some of the research that we've done that we've tried that we've, we've, we failed at some we, we've gotten right. Uh, you know, there's one clear thing that's, that's consistent with all this. If it doesn't start and end with us as the end user, the patient, we're not going to get the outcomes that are beneficial for us or society. And I think you'll see coming out of that now because of what we've seen now, even with this vaccination, 
uh, we have so much re-education to do for people uh, all along the journey, no matter where you're at, because of everything you see on TV is always coming from a bias or a conflict. And people yeah. are allowed to make a living and there are right things for everyone. Just like I said, I'm using tape or I'm using this nasal mask or you know, th th there's a combination of it all. But I just yeah. want to make sure people are getting the right up to date information and all these barriers that are in their way, because it is more dangerous to, to take a pill or drink a glass of wine to go to sleep than to, wear, to use this machine, for instance. Or if there are children out there that are being put on a, on a methamphetamine like Adderall or Ritalin, uh, yeah. let, let's be clear, if they haven't had a sleep workup, that's that's child endangerment. It's child abuse. So, well, well, I just think it's up, you know, if you're talking about children, parents have a obligation to do what's in best interest for their, their child. You know, for me, I was a little bit stubborn and hard headed. It took, it took the arrhythmia um, for me to go get the sleep study. I think, you know, in my heart of hearts, I think this, this treatment should be available to everybody and it should be, you know, um, so much easier to get. They should it's be selling these at Walgreens and CVS. I mean, it's not like it's the most complicated machine in the world. It's it's a it's a vacuum in reverse, basically. They you, you, your you, face. You, you can make it out of thirty five dollar parts at Ace Hardware, uh, and that's a free plug for Ace. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is, it's it's the the algorithm that goes into running it that we need to learn about, and we're going to get into all that with with the regulators. But there's a lot of blame to go around. Um, so. It's not just the doctors. It's not just the insurers. It, it's not just the the government. There there's there's a lot of you know in, things people got got fat off, off off the good times in this world. And you got to go back to the medical field in itself. Sleep deprivation is not a badge of honor. We have so much earlier education to do and earlier prevention. This is not a money maker. This 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 will help society, but mm -hmm. only when we realize the benefits of it. So well, I think it's in the best interest of the patient to take take control of their own their own medical journey. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm a curious person. So, you know, when I first started using it, the AHI, I guess, which is the hypoxia index, right? It was started at 3.9%, then it got down to three, and now it's at 2% because you know i've been controlling the leaking mask and so let, know, let, let, let me be careful it's not a percentage those are literally no, numbers the number no. of events per hour that you're having right sorry excuse so, me but if, if you go from three to two events an hour down to one event an hour just imagine that's that's you just cut in half the amount of time someone nudged you or elbowed you to wake you up or you woke yourself up kicking to wake yourself up because you're not breathing so those and, and I actually called the doctor. I said, what do these numbers mean? And, and you know, because no one's calling me saying, OK, let's go through the machine together. Let, you know, you know, I was looking at it. I called and they said, oh, you know, that's really good. Let's look at the 30 day average, the seven day average. And, and they said, OK, this is this is getting progressively better. You know, let's keep getting down to one if we can. But, you know, two is still therapeutic as before when it was, you know, when I got tested, it was 26 events per hour. And, you know, obviously that's not sustainable for a long term. You, you, you don't want to know what they think my raw number would have been if I ever did a complete raw study because your apneas get worse later in the night. I was so severe they never let me get to that early morning right. hours. But they, they Dr. Gimeno said, you're, you're somewhere in the 130s, 150s wow. an hour. You're just, yeah, you my, I was having micro sleeps my whole life. But that was my normal. I didn't know any different until I got that first night. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I felt. So, I, you know, I appreciate this, you know, being able to come come and talk with you guys and and, and just kind of give you an update. Like, you know, I'm only about a month or so into my CPAP journey. And um, and I think know. you're I think you're doing good on it, Mark. And, and I think you, you obviously know you have a lot of room for improvement. And but you're also an N of one and, and you're a textbook case why we have to educate the cardiovascular field. We have to educate the parents. You shouldn't feel bad that 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 you put this offer in denial or that maybe maybe you know once you put your own mask, you gotta turn around and look at your child. Is there something I could do for my child? Did I pass this on to her? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 those type of things. We don't know what we don't know. So if we get the education, the right education. We could do a lot of good things. It's it's like the technology on Facebook. It's great technology if in the right hands. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg built an amazing platform, but he's got a little bit too much control of it at this point. Right. Like, uh, obviously, you know, yeah. <laughs> obviously, machine learning and and artificial intelligence. It's uh, humans are the ones doing the input. So if if you have the right ethical people putting exactly. in the good input, you'll have great outcome. You you know you, we could do. I mean, the whole world is going to be driven eventually by, by this. And, 
you know, it, it's ethics at the core that will drive whether it's a, you know, you know, uh, which was funny. I, I remember being at my first uh, national PCORI meeting almost eight years ago, and then they were wondering where are we going to find all the patients. I'm like, they're already at Facebook. Why do you got to go anywhere? So I mean, it's like we we could solve this national healthcare problem if we were using Google, if we were using these platforms transparently, and and mm -hmm. and and you're going to need that with this next administration to to fix healthcare because this, this is not a, a band aid approach that's going to happen now. You've you've got a major 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 uh peak coming and it's 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 a scary thing for this this country and this world to have to go through uh mm -hmm. especially when a lot of it was avoidable and, and, and negligent and could have been mitigated well i think with the cpap machine you know the data that we're getting off of that i i would i would really like to be able to see the data and get the data coming off of that those sd cards so are you, are you are you using your manufacturer's app to, to look at your data how are you seeing your data are you looking on the machine i'm looking on the machine okay and have I'm you, sure there's tried, apps out you, there. Yeah, they each each manufacturer has their own app that'll help you read, so you, you can download depending on which companies you have. But but you know it's it's the parsing of that data. How, how does that data? What does that data mean? You know that's not something that I, I they, might they, know, they, but it's something they, I'm they, curious they, about. They do a good job in giving you what's called the summary data and the right amount of data for a patient. Uh, for the average patient, patient for the layman patient, but not for the person who's really into looking at their sleep and their algorithms and their and their and their and their data every day. The yeah. doctors get to see about ten channels of summary data, whereas patients get to see about five or six. Um, but there's actually about my doctors. Channels. My doctors not even seen any of my data because when I talked to them, they said, "Oh, like the machine and the." The machines aren't talking to each other, so he just had me read off the, my my screen, which is another example of how messed up this whole thing is. Because I was like, "So are you getting?" It was been about thirty days because it was before I did my second CAM study. I was like, "I wanted to have a talk with them because I was trying to get the right mask," and they said, "Oh yeah, we still don't have any of your data." So, like, so, so let me ask you this: because your doctor would would is 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 the, who writes the prescription and is who diagnoses you but who serves your 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 intervention when it comes to to this is is a durable medical equipment or a home medical equipment so who that's who yeah. should be reading your data if you were leasing or buying a machine through them be, or if you're a medicare patient they actually have this crazy uh, archaic rule that you have to wear you know four hours or or, or 70 percent of the time for for 30 days in your first but why does the dme even need to have my data they're just the the, the manufacturer because, of the equipment so 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 I, I'm not an attorney, and it ain't my job to, to answer to, to 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 say who should have it and who shouldn't. But because of what they said, Stark laws, they didn't let sleep doctors control the data. That's why they wanted a third party. I think it's made the barriers and the obstacles for patients getting the best outcomes harder because you're not you're you're talking to a third party, someone with a few hours of training, compared to your doctor who's been trained to this. Now your doctor has no incentive to do this because they're not incentivized incentivized for you to get good outcomes on your machine. They're only incentivized to diagnose and send you for a test. Right. Interesting. Yeah, because it didn't seem like there was any urgency to get to get it fixed. No. I was like, well, what can we do? And they're like, oh, just turn on your machine and look at the screen and tell me what the AHI is and tell me what the percentage yeah. of leaking is and the hours per use. Quite quite clearly, like like all of healthcare and like a lot of these other, the education system, the political system, the housing system, I mean, you, you can go down the line. We've got a lot of broken parts. Does that mean that you throw it all away? No. Does it mean you deconstruct some of it and use the good parts? Does that mean the the basis and the backbone of what this country was built on is there? Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, without without yeah. going on on a you know, we've got to combat apnea. We've got to combat COVID. Uh, and this country's got to come together again and, and do this because when this country does come together, we can do amazing things. In spite of all of this insanity, we've developed the vaccines out of this country. And these vaccines out of this country, you know, are better than anything out of Europe because the FDA is the one institution that I can say personally from my experience that has held its, held its, its back up in the midst of all this insanity in the last four years. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with the opt I, the optimistic and the potential that we can do for society, for health disparities, for breaking down all these walls and not just giving it lip service or saying patient centered, but we, we as an organization, as a small little engine that can at sleepapnea.org, 
uh, we've been playing with the big boys, but we're, we're about to leapfrog the American Hearts, the American Cancer Societies, the American Diabetes Association, the, the, and the Alzheimer's, because quite honestly, those are secondary comorbid issues of, of sleep that could be prevented. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, diet, exercise, and sleep, those should be the three pillars. They don't call anything. Yeah, no. Um, you know, diet, exercise, and sleep. You know, you, if you get those three honed in, uh, there will be so much less disease and illness in, in our world and in our country. So, uh, you know, it seems really simple. It is, but it's hard to hard to execute. Um, and so I, I just hope that, you know, people listening to this, you know, will take those three things, diet, exercise, and sleep uh, to heart. And, and, you know, if you're not doing those three things, it's going to be hard for long-term positive outcomes with your health. It, it's just – you could get your diabetes probably under control. You, you get a lot of things under control if you do. You can you manage your diabetes. You can reverse your AFib. There are certain things you can manage. There are certain things you could literally reverse. I right. can tell you I've been treated now almost, whew, my daughter, uh, almost over 11 years, and, and I'm still seeing improvements in parts and aspects of my life. Now, am I also That's seeing true. other things of aging? Of course. Uh, are we living under strange, extraneous, uh, stressful times? Yeah. So everyone's affected by that to one degree or another. Um, but if the world could just make sleep a priority and make sure it's factored into whatever component, whether it's the workforce, the education, uh, whatever the discipline is, and start to pay it the respect, we will have, we will see so much more benefits for this planet, for society, uh, for people getting along. Uh, for people coexisting, it's yeah. just it's 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 something we've done. This and this goes back to we the sh it. Shakespeare time. It. Yeah, you know, look, it, get get a get, get a good night's sleep, eat your veggies, and take a walk. You'll you'll be much better off. Before and I and I do two of the three. I'm the biggest hypocrite. But the reason I can tell you I don't take a walk is I don't feel safe in my own neighborhood. <laughs> in the mean streets of Sarasota. We'll yeah, they're very very mean over here. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mark, I, I, I can't. I thank you for once again coming back and following up with us. I'm so happy that you you, you seek more help for 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 what was you know ailing you. You know you haven't found all the answers yet, but this has truly been heart to heart from from one Miami brother to another. Uh, you know we've both been very good guides for each other as far as helping us uh, discover these journeys and 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 helping other people and uh, making a difference in other lives. So. You know, sharing your story and, 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 and your wife, you know, letting you share your story is, is we appreciate it. And uh, let's you. let's let anything more we can do for you and and help you out as 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 you guys, you want to get deeper into this and understand your data. Um, you know, let's let's keep yeah. that conversation going. Maybe Definitely. we come, maybe we next conversation. Let's talk with uh, Dr. Rob Thomas off our, our interdisciplinary advisory board and, and, and see, you know, what he thinks of your data you know, from afar. I so, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Everyone be well, put on your mask and good night. Good luck. This is sleepapnea.org signing out. Nanu, Nanu. Thank you for joining us today. Be an awake angel and you can help those financially impacted by COVID-19. Just $50 can provide two CPAP masks to someone in need. Please visit sleepapnea.org slash donate for details. SAA is a patient-focused organization. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or sleepapnea.org and you can join the conversation. It's all free.